Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Saturday evening, August 31st. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions regarding Dorian, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local officials for the best information for you. Well, here's the hurricane continuing to move what you can tell is nearly due westward here today with a very well-defined structure, still a Category 4, winds up to 150 miles per hour, and pressure in the mid-940s. This is the old recon mission from earlier in the afternoon showing a pretty steady pressure at near 945, 946. Six, and that seems to have continued with the new plane just now getting in there hasn't reported a final value but the estimate is pretty close to that mid 940s somewhere thereabouts so we've had a pretty steady state hurricane today with winds about 150 and uh, you know of course it could be stronger could be a cat 5 but at this point it's kind of nitpicking uh, the storm could get stronger eventually. Uh, the current things that might be limiting it include the fact that it recently passed over a cooler patch, not really cooler at the surface, but just a shallower layer of warm water, and the warm water gets a little bit deeper as the system moves near the northern Bahamas during the next day or so, and we might, for that reason alone, see the storm get a little bit stronger here. One thing to keep an eye on is the potential for eyewall replacement cycles. If we look at some of the banding on the most recent microwave pass, we'll see that eye there. The, just the one thing to keep an eye on is still some of these outer bands trying to wrap around and if they do this much more then they can sometimes start to form a secondary eye wall at a greater radius. This will be something to keep an eye on because they're very hard to predict but when they do occur they're normally accompanied by a brief period of weakening which can be fortunate or unfortunate depending on whether or not uh, it re-intensifies on the other side because sometimes they can get very strong and larger at the end of those cycles. So we'll just keep an eye on those, kind of hard to see coming in advance. Alright, so jumping right into the official forecast graphic today to orient ourselves a little bit because we've had you know, a storyline with this storm and things are changing and are still fluid. We're still expecting this westward motion to continue and bring the storm's eye very close, if not directly, over the northern Bahamas, specifically the Abaco Islands and or Grand Bahama, and we can see this due west motion still kind of continuing here. Uh, models generally expect it to gain a little bit of latitude before it gets to these islands, some more than others. The GFS on some runs barely misses to the north, still getting him in the eye wall. The European run is a little bit farther south before stalling in here and we can see that the official forecast is basically on top of these islands and you can see moving very slowly with these points spaced 12 hours apart so the storm is moving slowly this is about the worst case scenario unfortunately for these particular islands a hurricane warning is obviously in effect hurricane watch for andros island and then we expect after this slowdown near the Bahamas to uh, see a turn toward the north. And as a reminder, one of the primary steering feature we're really watching right now is this uh, mid to upper level ridge showing up to the north of the storm, which is currently keeping it on its westward track. That ridge is expected to be eroded by a weak trough coming in from the north and eroding this flank. So when the storm gets in here, it starts to encounter steering currents that are very weak and then it will eventually start turning toward the north toward the void that is left behind when this ridge weakens. Now the timing of this turn is absolutely essential. The trend today relative to the last few days has obviously been good news. As all of you know, the forecast track is now offshore. It was onshore earlier and uh, we've seen it shift toward the east now and most of the models now agree that the most likely scenario is that the eye stays offshore Florida and potentially offshore of the United States entirely though it still gets much closer to the Carolinas than it does to Florida on most model runs. It's important to remember that we're still talking in total here about a five-day forecast now, you might remember when the five-day forecast was just including Florida. You can see that the, the forecast has changed a bit since then. It shifted. We're still talking about that level of uncertainty up here in the Carolinas and Georgia, and even for Florida, this is day three. Uh, there's a lot of slow movement in here, and when steering currents are weak, especially when steering currents are weak, very small changes can matter a lot because if the models have that data just a little bit wrong or if something is off or there's a little bit of an error this track can easily shift and uh, so we have to watch the timing of this turn very carefully and I'll give you an illustration of one little difference that we found today uh, in looking at the steering of the storm often the recon planes go out and they sample 
uh, steering features like this ridge to get data so that the models can be more accurate. And we've had a mission doing that today. It's called the G4 aircraft, and it's taken some measurements within this ridge to the north of the storm. A lot of these got into the 18Z model runs, and the only one we have right now really is the GFS. And I'll just show you, this is a GIF of the last three runs of the GFS. So this is the one from 2 a.m. this morning, the run from 8 a.m. this morning, and the one from 2 p.m. this afternoon. And these are all valid on Tuesday afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And you can see that the trend has been a little bit more toward Florida on these particular runs because the ridge has been sampled by these drop zones to be a little bit stronger on the GFS. So far as I can tell, that's the reason. And the reason it gets closer to Florida on this latest run is because the storm, because the ridge is stronger, it's steering it westward faster just a little bit by a hair, but it gets farther west in the northern Bahamas before making the turn. And again, where does this turn happen? Very important. So if the storm is moving a little bit faster than expected, it'll get farther west before the ridge to the north weakens. It's all about the timing. So if the storm gets here earlier, it will get farther to the west before turning up. Likewise, if it's slower, it won't get as far west before making the turn. And it's a very subtle thing. So what I'm trying to say is we're not done potentially seeing little shifts in the track. Perhaps nothing drastic and the most likely solution still keeps the storm offshore, but especially on some of these latest runs today, we're seeing evidence that the ridge might be a little stronger and the storm might get uncomfortably close to the Florida coastline. Let me just share with you the H Wharf run that came out um, from this same cycle on 18Z and you can see, let me scroll down here, that the storm moves into the Bahamas, slows down in here, and now the question is how close does it get to the coast? And you can see it sort of starts drifting. It gets pretty close here. We've got the tropical storm force wind field on shore in south central Florida, and then it starts to make its crawl up the coast here. And you can see that the hurricane force wind field is in purple. This is getting on shore in Florida. This would be a situation where these areas of the coastline are under a hurricane warning. No, the eye is not on shore, but it's also not far, and it's only 30 miles from the coast on this particular run. Prior runs had this farther offshore, and this is again a consequence of the ridge being sampled a little bit stronger today. So this gets uncomfortably close, and you can see that it actually gets all the way to Cape Canaveral on this run. Look at this. This is almost a landfall for Central Florida. We're not done yet. In fact, I'm just seeing some of these new frames for the first time. It is onshore on this particular 18Z run. And this is something we've got to take seriously, folks. And don't assume just because that the trend has been our friend recently and that this cone is shifted farther east, that doesn't mean it's not going to shift back. We just don't know that kind of detail. It's a very subtle thing with the storm stalling like this and moving very slowly. So please don't invert your preparations. Keep those preparations in place because we could be dealing with a situation where the storm is close enough to cause dangerous conditions and it could parallel the entire coastline of the southeastern US. So if we're talking about Georgia, if we're talking about the Carolinas, same thing, especially if the storm stays offshore Florida, it's bad news up here because the storm could stay offshore Florida and then try to sneak right in here, close to Savannah, close to Charleston, and then on up the coast, we could be dealing with storm surge. And that's gonna be one of the especially big problems I wanna point out is that even if, let's pretend this run doesn't even make landfall, even if the run comes up the coast here, we're talking about surge getting piled in and we've got flooding problems. Remember Hurricane Matthew did a similar path potentially paralleling the coast. We had storm surge flooding, we had problems, and we still had wind damage because, well, guess what? The storm is not one point at the eye. It's a whole wind field and it's pushing water on shore and it's dumping heavy rainfall on the left side. And this is a potential set of problems that could occur even if the eye doesn't make it ashore because you know, all the rest of it could still be impacting the coast. So again, all up and down the coast, we could be dealing with big problems for a while. And we've still got some days to watch this storm. We're talking about Monday, it's in the Bahamas. Maybe Tuesday, it's finally making that turn. And where is it in here? You know, how close to the coast is it? Not entirely sure yet. So don't let your guard down. That's it for tonight. Thanks for watching.